following is a presentation that I did for a community event very recently. Now Atlassian in November made some changes to the way they're going to be tracking usage of your automation rules. Now, whether you know this or not, this is going to have significant implications on the way that you and your teams use automation rules. And this talk is going to give you my top tips on how you can avoid running into a disaster with the new rules. Now, let me give you the bottom line up front. Atlassian is now enforcing Basically, they're tracking all the usage of every single successful automation rule that you and your team run. Now, there are some ways around this, and I'm going to be covering those in this video. But the most important thing that you need to know, when you run out of your automation rules, every team is going to have an X number of rules, and that number is going to be dependent on your subscription and the number of users that are in your Jira. But when you run out, your automation rules are going to stop and they're going to stop until the next billing cycle starts. And this could have some significant detrimental impacts on you and your team. So you're going to want to pay attention to the different tips that I'm going to give you in this video as they're going to walk you through all the things that you should be doing in order to minimize the probability that you run out of available automation rule executions. So I hope you do enjoy these tips. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you share this video with everybody you know. And most importantly, if you want to help support the channel, check out the links down below. I have a merch store and I have paid courses that are available and so if you want to help support the channel, check out the links down below as those are going to be the best way that you can help support this growing channel. So let's jump into the presentation. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I do review my comments and I will be responding back. We're going to be talking about building a strategy specifically around avoiding a surprise bill from Atlassian. Uh, we'll go over the details in a second, but essentially in a nutshell, Atlassian starting November 1st, which wasn't that long ago, introduced a, an interesting change. They, they deviated the way they were doing billing for their automation rules. And I've been using automation rules for two, three years now, and it wasn't really ever a problem. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on, on the cloud, as this is where uh, this change is really going to take effect. And their change is kind of scary. Uh, when I first looked at it, uh, we had an episode of The Jira Life, which is a podcast that I'll talk about in a second here that I host, co-host with uh, uh, The Jira Guy. If you're, if you're familiar with thejiraguy.com, um, he's my co-host. And, and we talked about it because it's an interesting change, one that Alaskan made that I don't think got enough media attention, if you will. And I'm sure it's going to impact everybody that uses the Alaskan product line. And so we're going to jump in today and kind of talk about just, you know, some helpful tips on how you can protect yourself a little bit more and, and kind of defend against some of these changes that are ultimately out of our control, but we just got to deal with them. So one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that you are not going to see a sudden unexpected Atlassian bill. You're not going to be charged for every automation rule that you go over your usage limits. What is going to happen is your automation rules are going to stop executing, which is just as bad, if not worse, in my opinion, because I'd rather have the option to pay for that extra usage than to have to manually go back and fix things because those automation rules that I've come to depend on all of a sudden don't work anymore. So keep that in mind. Little mistake, little tweak that I've done ever since I've done the video because we now have new information and just keep that in mind. Strategy number one, and this is going to kind of seem counterintuitive, but bear with me for a second, right? So single rule projects, I recommend you audit them or evaluate them and see if you can convert them to multi-global rule projects. And let me tell you why, right? Because up until this point, we were, we were kind of told, hey, if you make your project single project, the scope at least, then they are not going to count, right? They're free. But that led to some inefficiencies, right? That led to us having 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 rules that are the exact same rules, but they're project specific so that they could be free. And so, so one thing that you can do is you can kind of go through your list, right? Because one of the global strategy with all of this is you got to go and audit all your automation rules. You got to go and look at all of them, right? And so go and see if you have those duplicates because you're going to be able to do one of two things. One, you might be able to make it more efficient where you can just you know condense it to just make it a global rule or make it a uh, multi-project or you can delete them right because and then we'll talk about this as another strategy right but if you have a lot of duplicate rules that are kind of doing basically the same thing those are going to be really good candidates to to reduce right 
And so to echo a little bit more on this strategy, rather than us having to maintain a lot of different rules, if we can condense them to a smaller list, they become easier for us to audit. I don't think this particular strategy is going to help us, you know, minimize the, the billing cost, but it is going to help us so that we don't have 25 pages of rules that we have to look at every single month that we're trying to figure out, okay, which rule is running a lot, right? Because what's going to happen is these automation rules are necessary, right? Like they, we create many automation rules because they help, right? They're value added. And so there's not going to be a way around it. It's just now that they all, not that they're all being built for, you might be able to get some efficiencies with your organization there. Basically add more conditions, right? So one way to, again, it's not really a throttle, right? But my biggest rule or my biggest tip here is, hey, if you're going to be built for your successful executions, and again, this sounds counterintuitive, maybe make them a little harder to execute successfully, right? A lot of people have like a, hey, if the issue transitions or the if an issue, you know, whatever whatever automation or something, I'm trying to find something simple, right? When an issue is created, auto assign it to somebody. That's going to happen a lot, <laughs> right? How many issues do we not create? But you can add conditions. When an issue is created and it equals a bug, assign it to somebody, right? Because maybe you don't want to assign stories automatically. Maybe you want to add rules where a, an issue is created and it's a bug and the component equals X, then assign it to somebody, right? Because right now, leading up to this uh, up to this change, it was it didn't matter, right? You can just assign it to everybody. You could be the Oprah's of assignees, right? And I'm, I'm probably using a bad example with, with my automation rule. I don't know if any of you have an automation rule that automatically assigns issues, but you might not want to do that, right? Like take that as an example where you might want to be a little bit more prescriptive and go, hey, we don't want this rule to always execute every single time. We only want to execute it under these specific conditions, right? So that can kind of be a form of throttling where it's not always going to run unless there's three, four, five different conditions that you create are actually all true. Then it'll run, right? And so I think it's going to be important for you to review all your automation rules because Especially if you look at the templates, if, if you guys go to a Jira project and you you go to into any project that you may or may not have automation rules in, so I'm just going to randomly pick one here. And when I go to project settings and I go to automation, assuming I don't have any automation rules in here, which I don't, <clears throat> right? But look at this. At last, it gives us a recommendation. Turn these on, <laughs> right? And so if you think about all the Jira projects that you have in your instance, and if you've ever turned them all on, where you're just going to have copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of automation rules that pretty much do all the same thing because they're all based on these templates, right? And so you may want to, you know, again, you have to audit every rule. I think if there's a key takeaway from this entire presentation is do yourself a favor and go into your automation rules and take a look at all your rules, right? Because there's going to, I guarantee you, there's going to be some inefficient rules, right? If you look at my automation rules here, I probably, I don't create a whole lot in this instance because this is kind of like my demo one, right? But I have an auto assign issue here, right? And it's just like, look, when this is created, assign it to somebody. This is a rule that is going to successfully run a lot, a lot, a lot of times, right? How many issues are people creating in a day it can be in the thousands, right? And so don't do something silly like this anymore, right? Because again, prior to November 1st, totally cool. After November 1st, you're going to hit your usage limits a lot quicker this way. So strategy number three is check your cloud products. So as you saw, there's different limits based on the cloud product. So before Jira Cloud, regardless of whether you were in Jira Software, Jira Work Management, Jira Product Discovery, or Jira Service Management, they were all just one bucket, right? And so review your global projects and your multi-project uh, rules and divvy them up there, right? Because you're going to have different limits. And so you don't want these double dipping. You don't, I don't know enough yet. I don't, I don't have enough information to to know if I have a if I have an automation rule that is running in both Jira software and Jira service management, right? Like my create, when an issue is created, auto assign it to somebody. I don't have enough information to know if that's going to count for both, right? Atlassian is still rolling out these UI updates, and this this UI that I showed you that kind of uses this shows you this usage here is uh, is fairly new, right? It's it's kind of just slowly rolling out, and so this is something that I'm going to be experimenting with, where I'm going to make a rule that runs in two or three products and see, do I get dinged on each one <laughs> or do I get dinged on just one of them, right? I think this is really, really important information to have. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just do it live. Let's let's go to yeah. my automation rule here and let's auto assign issue. 
we're going to um, turn it on first of all and I'm going to go to rule details here and it's global and so I'm going to create three issues one in a JSM project one in a JPD project and one in a Jira, Jira product discovery one and let's see how this reacts so I'm going to go over here open up a Jira software project and create an issue auto rule one hopefully I don't have any required fields on this one there we go so I made it this automation rule has been created. You can see that it's automatically assigned to me. We're gonna go through the audit log, confirm that it ran. Here it is successfully on this project. Great. Let's go over to a service project. We're gonna hit create. I'm gonna create a request here. Test auto two. Click, yep, it wants a description. Hit create. Okay, you want a delivery date. <laughs> What else do you want? <clears throat> okay, good. So we got demo 22 got created. I can click on it. You can see that it's auto assigned to me. We can come back over here, click refresh. This has now ran, right? So this is what I'm talking about where we have a global automation rule. It doesn't matter if it's coming out of JPD, Jira service management or Jira software, it's gonna execute, right? But now if we go to our our global automation over here and I'm gonna, I wanna see my usage, right? Did, I, did it count? See, so I don't even know if like, how long it takes <laughs> as you can see i successfully executed two rules i don't know if i have to refresh i don't know if it takes 24 hours right this is oh there it is right so it got two counted against me for jira software that's interesting because i clearly made this one this is clearly a service management project and uh so this is interesting stuff right so we're <laughs> definitely learning live here but this is uh I, I was not expecting this i was expecting this to go down by one and this to go down by one as well. You could experiment with, you know, making the rule be only on JSM, right? So if you go to the scope of this particular rule and you change it so that it's it's only, instead of being global, right, it's on a single project and that project happens to be the the demo, the, the service project one that I have. If I hit update, I'm curious now if I make another one. So let's do a test three. Uh, what was the delivery date? We'll get that. We'll go look at it. This is ran, so that means my execution was probably good. Here it is, success. And so now, if I come back over here to my usage, and I have to refresh, and it takes a second. We all like to, there we go, see? Now I went to the right one, so I dropped one. Notice that it's so weird, it's just like, it, it'll... It's gonna line item it, but that's interesting. <laughs> but I guess we learned something here, folks. So this is why, again, this point number three is, it maybe if you're running out on one, you switch over to the other, right? Although I suspect that most of you won't, this won't be the case, but I'm curious to see if Atlassian will give you a total limit. I don't know if any of you have access to a premium with multiple people. I'd love to know what this number looks like here, right? Is this, does this studio show 10,000 if you have 10 users, right? I only have one in this particular instance, um, but I'd be very, very curious to see what those look like. If the rule is not adding value when you're doing your auditing, you should remove it or disable it, right? If the author, the creator has left the company, it's probably a really, really good idea to review that one. Oftentimes we just leave things alone because that's the way they are and they work. And there's, I guarantee you, you're gonna send out emails to a bunch of people telling them, hey, uh, I'm gonna, Disable your rule in 30 days if you didn't reply. You're gonna hear crickets, turn it off. I guarantee you within like 10 minutes, you'll hear from them real quickly, <laughs> right? Probably not a good best practice, but double check all your rules, right? It's gonna be a great opportunity. You saw I have mine all disabled because I have so many rules that I just make randomly, right, for my YouTube channel that I'm gonna run out of them real quickly, especially since I'm on the free version of some of these products. I'm gonna run out real quick if they're just running, like firing off all day long, right? So. Go in there, disable them, delete them if you have to. Check for duplicates, check for, you know, some of them that haven't been used in forever. Uh, just, it's, it's always a good idea to, you know, be auditing these things and be cleaning them up and, and make sure that, uh, make sure that you're not, you know, accidentally paying for something that you don't need to be paying for. And then we're getting to the last strategy here. And this is to remove, again, very similar note of like removing or disabling your project slash Jira admins. There is such a thing as having too many folks in the kitchen. Anybody who can get to your global automation rules, 
like your site admins, your org admins, your Jira admins, and then anybody who's a project admin, right? So what is a project admin? So anybody that can go to any project and click on project settings and they can see this, you want to be very, very careful with these because we usually hand these out like candy, right? Because a project admin doesn't have a whole lot of influence outside their immediate project, but now they can create automation rules in their project, single scope, and now they can go crazy and make a bunch of automation rules that you're not even aware of. Double check your project admins, right? Or, and, or at the very least, because obviously and sometimes our hands are tied with that respect, communicate, right? Let them know, hey, don't just make automation rules willy-nilly that are very inefficient and just run every 10 seconds, right? Tell them that you are not getting billed for these and tell them to add some conditions, some criteria, tell them to make sure they're not creating like duplicates of each other, right? Because sometimes I've seen this happen so many times where I make an automation rule in January. Here I am in December. I'm like, hmm, I need an automation rule that does the same thing I thought in January. And I thought I had a bright idea, but I'm just doing a duplicate rule from something I did six, seven, ten months ago. Over communicate and tell everybody that you can, that these changes are here. And as you saw, <laughs> as you see here, right, Atlassian is not joking around anymore. It used to be that when I came to my usage, it said like, X amount out of unlimited. <laughs> um, Atlassian was not billing. They were not tracking these things. This is brand new. They are seriously tracking. I ran three rules in the last 15 minutes. I now got dinged three rules or three executions. So uh, be very, very careful.